Hi there. <clears throat> You're in the live with your mate, JJ. <laughs> so, uh, I've been looking forward to this video for a while now. I, um, I need to get up to date with the, uh, the old book and the new book features that uh, come with the regular installment of the show. Um, I haven't, I've done a couple of old book videos, but I, I have yet to do the inaugural new book. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm looking forward to that. I've been thinking about it for a while now. What, what, what book I'll do, what's going to be the first book for the, the new book review, um, for the, for the video blog. So I thought, um, uh, about it and I decided that I wanted to do the art of electronics by Paul Horowitz and Winfield Hill. I have the third edition, which I just checked is still the latest edition. So, uh, this thing is venerable tome. Look at the size of this thing. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, um, pop, pop it open with you. We're going to go through the full contents to have a look at everything that's in here. Um, I'll go through the stuff on the back and some of the front matter, and then maybe we'll pick, uh, something that sounds interesting and just randomly zoom into something, uh, that, that, that takes my eye while we're, uh, we're doing the, the contents review. So, um, I don't suppose there's any reason to, to uh, not just get on with it. So I'll take you over to the bench and we'll open this guy up and, and we'll, we'll see what he has to say. So here we are on the bench. I suppose the first thing we could do is just have a look at the back of the book here. Um, and uh, I'm going to take my glasses off because it's, uh, it's uh, not good light situation. Actually, I wonder if I could put that on. No, not that. Uh, what have I done? Maybe this one. Uh, no. I'm not sure what I've done. <clears throat> not sure. Anyway, um, I don't want to put this other light on because there's a weird like uh, frequency flashing thing and uh, I don't want that to affect the video. So I'm actually operating in less light than would be ideal. Uh, and I don't want to take your time now to try and diagnose that particular problem. So, <clears throat> oh, here we go. On the back, it's four quotes from other people talking about the book. So it doesn't tell you anything of itself, it just defers to some other people. So first, this is Jim Williams, late analog guru from Linear Technology Corporation. First of all, after I forklifted chapter five onto my reading table, I sat down and read it. It is simply spectacular. That may be <coughs> overly exclamatory language, but it is the only appropriate verbiage I can summon. Spectacular, deep and wide. I especially like the comments about interpreting specifications and the deconstruction of the Agilent voltmeters is just, well, Wonderful. It's high praise, isn't it? And next we have John Willison, founder of Stanford Research Systems. He says, wow, chapter five details every circuit artifact that I've encountered in the past 30 years in a thorough, pragmatic and straightforward way. My only twinge is that it discloses and explains in glorious graphical detail and with real part numbers, many topics that I thought were my personal trade secrets. <laughs> I love the plots. I know that it must take an enormous effort to collate all of the device characteristics. It's worth the effort. The way that the data is presented allows the reader to get terrific perspective on a lot of landscape in a single view. Nice work. And then the third uh, quote is from uh, Lee Moore, Lady Ada Fried, <coughs> Ada Fruit Industries. Oh, that's cool. I know Lady Ada. She says, who among us has not kept a cherished copy of AOE on our workbench throughout our careers? Engineers, hackers, and makers of all stripes rejoice for the third edition of AOE is worth the wait. It is packed with tons of delicious knowledge to navigate electronics in both work and hobby. An encyclopedia of electronics knowledge, AOE is a pleasure to read through for tips and tricks, and it is an unbeatable resource. Take a day out to read a chapter. You will learn things you didn't even know you didn't know, or refer to the printouts, diagrams, and techniques as necessary to guide you through a difficult project. If you think electrical engineering is magical, then you must pick up this tome. And then the fourth one is from Walt Young, uh, former IC apps engineer and author of IC Op Amp Cookbook. Horowitz and Hill's third edition beautifully upgrades their earlier work with substantial updates to detail and without compromise to style, content, or technical quality. Like the second edition I've used for years, it's laser focused on <clears throat> the working engineer. Delivered in folksy Horowitz and Hill style, it is rich with the kind of nitty gritty information that's invaluable to circuit designers and manufacturers, much of what is absent or difficult to find elsewhere. This new book is a superb update, one that I'm sure will be treasured by those close to the art of analog circuitry. I tip my hat to H&H. &H. So there we go, some high praise for the book on the back cover there. This is the third edition, published by Camp Cambridge Press. So uh, on the front, <coughs> The Art of Electronics, third edition. Not sure who wrote this bit, but here we go. At long last, 
Here is the thoroughly revised and updated and long anticipated third edition of the hugely successful The Art of Electronics. Widely accepted as the best single authoritative text and reference on electronic circuit design, both analog and digital, the first two editions were translated into eight languages and sold more than a million copies worldwide. The Art of Electronics is explained by stressing the methods actually used by circuit designers, a combination of some basic laws, rules of thumb, and a non-mathematical treatment that encourages understanding why and how a circuit works. Paul Horowitz is a research professor of physics and of electrical engineering at Harvard University, where in 1974, he originated the laboratory electronics course from which emerged the art of electronics. In addition to his work in circuit design and electronic instrumentation, his research interests have included observational astrophysics, X-ray and particle microscopy, and optical and optical interferometry. He is one of the pioneers of the search for intelligent life beyond Earth, SETI. He is the author of some 200 scientific, scientific articles and reports, has consulted widely for industry and government, and is the designer of numerous scientific and photographic instruments. Winfield Hill is by inclination an electronics circuit design guru. After dropping out of the chemical physics graduate program at Harvard University and obtaining an EE degree, he began his engineering career at Harvard's Electronics Design Center. After seven years of learning electronics at Harvard, he founded C Data Corporation, where he spent 16 years designing instruments for physical oceanography. In 1988, he was recruited by Edwin Land to join the Roland Institute for Science. The Institute subsequently merged with Harvard University in 2003. As director of the Institute's Electronics Engineering Lab, he has designed some 500 scientific instruments. Recent, <coughs> recent interests include high voltage RF, up to 15 kilovolts, high current pulsed electronics, up to 1,200 amps, low noise amplifiers to sub nanovolt and pico amp, and MOSFET pulse generators. The Art of Electronics, third edition, Paul Horowitz, Harvard University, Winfield Hill, Roland Institute at Harvard, published by Cambridge University Press. They're in New York. To Vita and Ava. In Memorandum. Uh, in Memoriam. Uh, Jim Williams, 1948 to 2011. Contents. Now, here we go. Now, we got warned about Chapter 5. Apparently, that's the real, uh, the real zinger. But I'm going to go through the whole thing, and it might take a while because this book is extensive. So let's have a look at what's in it. <clears throat> uh, list of tables, preface to the third edition, preface to the second edition, preface to the first edition. Section 1, foundations, introduction, voltage, current, and resistance. Voltage and current, relationship between voltage and current, resistors, voltage dividers, voltage sources and current sources, Thevenin equivalent circuit, small signal resistance, an example, it's too hot, signals, Sinusoidal signals, signal amplitudes and decibels, other signals, logic levels, signal sources. Capacitors and AC circuits. Capacitors, RC circuits, V and I versus time. Differentiators, integrators, not quite perfect. Inductors and transformers, inductors, transformers. I think that's what we'll look at when we zoom in. I'm interested in knowing a little bit more about transformers. So that's on page 30. I'm going to make a note. So uh, diodes and diode circuits. Diodes, rectification, power supply filtering, rectifier configurations for power supplies, regulators, circuit applications of diodes, individual loads and diode protection, interlude, inductors as friends, impedance and reactance, frequency analysis of reactive circuits, reactance of inductors, voltages and, current, <coughs> voltages and currents as complex numbers, reactance of capacitors and inductors, in inductors, Ohm's law generalized, power in reactive circuits, Voltage dividers generalized, RC high pass filters, RC low pass filters, RC differentiators and integrators in the frequency domain, inductors versus capacitors, phasor diagrams, poles and decibels per octave, resonant circuits, LC filters, other capacitor applications, Thevenin's theorem generalized, putting it all together, an AM radio, other passive components. Electromechanical devices, switches. Electromechanical devices, relays. Connectors, indicators, variable components. A parting shot, confusing markings and itty bitty components. Surface mount technology, the joy and the pain. Additional exercises for chapter one, review of chapter one. Section two, bipolar transistors. Uh, actually, uh, those aren't sections, they're chapters, aren't they? I think they are. Wow, this book is dense and vast. This is going to take us like an hour to get through. Wow. 
So yeah, this is chapter two, and this is the bipolar transistors chapter. Introduction, first transistor model, current amplifier, some basic transistor circuits, transistor switch, switching circuit examples, emitter follower, emitter followers as voltage regulators, emitter follower biasing, current source, common emitter amplifier, unity gain phase splitter, transconductance, Ebers mol model applied to basic tra transistor circuits, improved transistor model, transconductance amplifier, the consequences of the Ebers mol model, rules of thumb for transistor design, the emitter follower revisited, the common emitter amplifier revisited, biasing the common emitter amplifier, and aside, the perfect transistor, current mirrors, differential amplifiers, some amplifier building blocks, push-pull output stages, Darlington connection, bootstrapping, current sharing in paralleled BJTs, capacitance and Miller effect, field effects transistors, negative feedback, introduction to feedback, gain equation, effects of feedback on amplifier circuits, two important details, two examples of transistor amplifiers with feedback, some typical transistor circuits, regulated power supply, temperature controller, simple logic with transistors and diodes, additional exercises for chapter two, review of, review of chapter two, chapter three, field effect transistors, introduction, FET characteristics, FET types, universal FET characteristics, FET drain characteristics, manufacturing spread of FET character characteristics, basic FET circuits, FET linear circuits, some representative JFETs, a brief tour, JFET current sources, FET amplifiers, differential amplifiers, oscillators, source followers, FETs as variable resistors, FET gate current, a closer look at JFETs, drain current versus gate voltage, drain current versus drain source voltage, output conductance, transconductance versus drain current, transconductance versus drain voltage, JFET capacitance, why JFET versus MOSFET amplifiers, FET switches, FET analog switches, limitations of FET switches, some fetch analog switch examples, MOSFET logic switches, power MOSFETs, high impedance thermal stability, power MOSFET switching parameters, power switching from logic levels, power switching cautions, MOSFETs versus BJTs as high current switches, some power MOSFET circuit examples, IGBTs and other power semiconductors, MOSFETs in linear applications, high voltage piezo amplifier, some depletion mode circuits, paralleling MOSFETs, thermal runaway, review of chapter three, supplement MOSFET gate drivers, chapter four, operational amplifiers, introduction to op amps, the perfect component, feedback and op amps, operational amplifiers, the golden rules, basic op amp circuits, inverting amplifier, non-inverting amplifier, follower, difference amplifier, current sources, integrators, basic cautions for op amp circuits, an op amp smorgasbord, linear circuits, non-linear circuits, op amp application triangle wave oscillator, op amp application pinch off voltage tester, programmable pulse width generator, active low pass filter, a detailed look at op amp behavior, departure from ideal op amp performance, effects of op amp limitations on circuit behavior, example sensitive millivoltmeter, bandwidth and the op amp current source, a detailed look at selected op amp circuits, active peak detector, sample and hold, active clamp, absolute value circuit, a closer look at the integrator, a circuit cure for FET leakage, differentiators, op amp operation with a single power supply, biasing single supply AC amplifiers, capacitive loads, single supply op amps, example voltage controlled oscillator, VCO implementations, through hole versus surface mount, zero crossing detector, an op amp table, other op other amplifiers and op amp types, some typical op amp circuits, general purpose lab amplifier, stuck node tracer, load current sensing circuit, integrating suntan monitor, feedback amplifier frequency compensation, gain and phase shift versus frequency, amplifier compensation methods, frequency response of the feedback network, additional exercises for chapter four, review of chapter four. Chapter five, precision circuits, precision op amp design techniques, Precision versus dynamic range, error budget, an example of millivolt meter revisited, the challenge, 10 millivolts, 1%, 10 mega ohms, 1.8 volt single supply, the solution, precision RRIO current source. The lessons, error budget, unspecified parameters. Another example, precision amplifier with null offset, circuit description, 
a precision design error budget, error budget, component errors, gain setting resistors, the holding capacitor, nulling switch, amplifier input errors, input impedance, input bias current, voltage offset, common mode rejection, power supply rejection, nulling amplifier input errors, amplifier output errors, slew rate general considerations, bandwidth and settling time, crossover distortion and output impedance, unity gain power buffers, gain error, gain nonlinearity, phase error and active compensation, RRIO op amps, the good, the bad and the ugly, input issues, output issues, choosing a precision op amp, seven precision op amps, number per package, supply voltage, signal range, single supply operation, offset voltage, voltage noise, bias current, current noise, GMRR and PSRR, GBW, FT, slew rate and N and settling time. Distortion, two out of three isn't bad, creating a perfect op amp. Auto zeroing, chopper stabilized amplifiers. Auto <coughs> zero op amp properties. When to use auto zero op amps, selecting an auto zero op amp, auto zero miscellany. Designs by the masters, Agilent's accurate DMMs. It was impossible. Wrong, it is impossible. <laughs> oh, no, 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 sorry. It's, it's impossible. Wrong, it is possible. Uh, block diagram, a simple plan. The 34401A 6.5 digit front end. The 34420A 7.5 digit front end. Difference, differential and instrumentation amplifiers. Introduction. Difference amplifier. Basic circuit operation. Some applications. Performance parameters. Circuit variations. Instrumentation amplifier. A first but naive guess. Classic three op amp instrumentation amplifier. Input stage considerations. A roll your own instrumentation amplifier. A riff on robust input protection. Instrumentation amplifier miscellany. Input current and noise. Common mode rejection. Source impedance and CMRR. EMI and input correction. Offset and CMRR trimming. Sensing at the load. Input bias path. Output voltage range. Application example current source. Other configurations. Chopper and auto zero instrumentation amplifiers. Programmable gain instrumentation amplifiers. Generating a differential output. Fully differential amplifiers. Differential amplifiers, basic concepts. Dis differential amplifier application example, wideband analog link. Differential input ADCs. <clears throat> Impedance matching. Differential amplifier selection criteria. Review of chapter five. Chapter six, filters. Introduction, passive filters. Frequency response with RC filters. Ideal performance with LC filters. Several simple examples. Interactive filters, an overview. Key filter performance criteria, filter types, filter implementation, active filter circuits, VCVS circuits, VCVS filter design using our simplified table, state variable filters, twin T notch filters, all pass filters, switching capacitor, oh sorry, switched capacitor filters, digital switching processing, blah, digital signal processing, filter miscellany, additional exercise of chapter six, review of chapter six, chapter seven, Oscillators and timers. Oscillators. Introduction to oscillators. Relaxation oscillators. The classic oscillator timer chip, the 555. Other relaxation oscillator ICs. Sine wave oscillators. Quartz crystal oscillators. High stability TCXO, OCXO, and beyond. Frequency synthesis, DDS, and PLL. Quadrature oscillators. Oscillator jitter. Timers. Step triggered pulses. Monostable multi vibrators. A monostable application, limiting pulse width and duty cycle. Timing with digital counters. Review of chapter seven. Chapter eight, low noise techniques. Noise. Johnson, Nyquist, noise. <clears throat> Shot noise. One over F noise, flicker noise. Burst noise, band limited noise, interference. Signal to noise ratio and noise figure. <clears throat> noise power density and bandwidth. Signal to noise ratio, noise figure, noise temperature. Bipolar transistor amplifier noise, voltage noise, EN, current noise, IN, BJT voltage noise, revisited. A simple design example, loudspeaker as microphone. Shot noise in current sources and emitter followers. Finding EN from noise figure specifications. Step one, NF versus IC. Step two, NF versus RS. Step three, getting to EN. Step four, the spectrum of EN. The spectrum of IN. When operating current is not your choice. Low noise design with bipolar transistors. 
Noise figure example. Charting amplifier noise with EN and IN. Noise resistance. Charting comparative noise. Low noise design with BJDs, two examples. Minimizing noise, BJDs, FETs, and transformers. A design example, 40 cent lightning detector preamp. Selecting a low noise bipolar transistor. <clears throat> An extreme low noise design challenge. Low noise design with JFETs. Voltage noise of JFETs. Current noise of JFETs. Design example, low noise wideband JFET hybrid amplifiers. Designs by the masters, the SR560, low noise pre-amplifier. Selecting low noise JFETs. Charting the bipolar FET shootout. What about MOSFETs? Noise in differential and feedback amplifiers. Noise in operational amplifier circuits. Excuse me, I just need to have some water here. All this talking. My mouth's drying out. <clears throat> uh, noise in differential and feedback amplifiers. Noise in operational amplifier circuits. Guide to table 8.3, choosing low noise op amps. Power supply rejection ratio. Wrap up, choosing a low noise op amp. Low noise instrumentation amplifiers and video amplifiers. Low noise hybrid op amps. Signal transformers. A low noise wideband amplifier with transformer feedback. Noise in trans impedance amplifiers. Summary of the stability problem. Amplifier input noise. The ENC noise problem. Noise in the trans, <coughs> trans resistance amplifier. An example, wideband JFET photodiode amplifier. Noise versus gain in the trans impedance amplifier. Output bandwidth limiting in the trans impedance amplifier. Composite trans impedance amplifiers. Reducing input capacitance, bootstrapping the trans impedance amplifier. Oscillating input capacitance, cascading the trans impedance amplifier. Trans impedance amplifiers with capacitive feedback. Scanning tunneling microscope preamplifier. Test fixture for, for compensation and calibration. A final remark. Noise measurements and noise sources. Measurement without a noise source. An example, transistor noise test circuit. Measurement with a noise source. Noise and signal sources. Bandwidth limiting and RMS voltage measurement. Limiting the bandwidth. Calculating the integrated noise. Op amp low frequency noise with asymmetric filter. Finding the 1 over F corner frequency. Measuring the noise voltage. Measuring the noise current. Another way, roll your own FA over root hertz instrument. Uh, noise potpourri. Potpourri. Uh, signal to noise improvement by bandwidth narrowing, lock in detection, power supply noise, capacitance multiplier, interference, shielding, and grounding, interfering signals, signal grounds, grounding between instruments. Additional exercises of chapter 8, review of chapter 8. Chapter 9, voltage regulation and power conversion. Tutorial from Xena to series pass linear regulator, adding feedback, basic linear regulator circuits with the classic 273. <laughs> that's not 273, that's Dyslexic's John, so that's the 723. The 723 regulator, in defense of the beleaguered 723. Fully integrated linear regulators, taxonomy of linear regulator ICs, three terminal <coughs> fixed regulators, three terminal adjustable regulators, 317 style regulator, application hints, 317 style regulator, circuit examples, lower dropout regulators, true low dropout regulators, current reference, three terminal regulator, dropout voltages compared, Dual voltage regulator circuit example. Linear regulator choices. Linear regulator idiosyncrasies. Noise and ripple filtering. Current sources. Heat and power design. Power transistors and heat sinking. Safe operating area. From AC line to unregulated supply. AC line components. Transformer. DC components. Unregulated split supply on the bench. Linear vers versus switcher. Ripple and noise. Switching, regula re uh, switching regulators and DC-DC converters. Linear versus switching. Switching converter topologies. Inductorless switching converters. Converters with inductors, the basic non-isolated topologies. Step down, buck converter. Step up, boost converter. Inverting converter. Comments on the non-isolated converters. Voltage mode and current mode. Converters with transformers, the basic designs. The flyback converter. Forward converters. Bridge converters. AC line powered offline switching converters, the AC to DC input stage, the DC to DC converter, a real world switcher example, switches top level view, switches basic operation, switches looking more closely, the reference design, wrap up, general comments on line powered switching power supplies, when to use switches, inverters and switching amplifiers, voltage references, Zena diode, band gap VBE reference, JFET pinch off VP reference, Floating gate reference, three terminal precision references, voltage reference noise, voltage differences, additional comments, commercial power supply modules, energy storage, batteries and capacitors,
battery characteristics, choosing a battery, energy storage and capacitors, additional topics in power regulation, over voltage crowbars, extending input voltage range, fold back current limiting, outboard pass transistor, high voltage regulators, review of chapter nine. Oh, we're getting there. So the next is chapter 10. Oh, no, we still got heaps to go. All right. Chapter 10, digital logic. Wow. Uh, basic logic concepts, digital versus analog, logic states, number codes, gates and truth tables, discrete circuits for gates, gate logic example, assertion level logic notation, digital integrated circuits, CMOS and bipolar TTL, catalog of common gates, IC gate circuits, CMOS and bipolar TTL characteristics. <clears throat> Three state and open collector devices, combinatorial logic, logic identities, minimization and the Carnot maps, combinatorial functions available as ICs, sequential logic, devices with memory, flip-flops, clocked flip-flops, combining memory and gates, sequential logic, synchronizer, monostable multivibrator, single pulse generation with flip-flops and counters, Sequ sequential functions available as integrated circuits, latches and registers, counters, shift registers, programmable logic devices, miscellaneous sequential functions. Some typical digital circuits, modular N counter, a timing example, multiplexed LED digital display, an N pulse generator, micro power digital design, keeping CMOS low power, logic pathology, DC problems, switching problems, congenital weaknesses of TTL and CMOS, additional exercises of chapter 10, review of chapter 10. Chapter 11, programmable logic devices, a brief history, the hardware, the basic PAL, the PLA, the FPGA, the configuration memory, other programmable logic devices, the software, an example, pseudo random byte generator, how to make pseudo random bytes, implementation in standard logic, implementation with programmable logic, programmable logic HDL entry, implementation with a microcontroller, advice, by technologies, by user communities, review of chapter 11, chapter 12, logic interfacing, CMOS and TTL logic interfacing, logic family chronology, a brief history, Input and output characteristics, interfacing between logic families, driving digital logic inputs, input protection, some comments about logic inputs, driving digital logic from comparators or op amps, and aside, probing digital signals, comparators, outputs, inputs, other parameters, other cautions, driving external digital loads from logic levels, positive loads, direct drive, positive loads, transistor assisted, negative or AC loads, protecting power switches, NMOS LSI interfacing, optoelectronics, emitters, indicators and LEDs, laser diodes, displays, optoelectronics, detectors, photodiodes and phototransistors, photomultipliers, optocouplers and relays, 1. Phototransistor output optocouplers, 2. Logic output optocouplers, 3. Gate driver optocouplers, 4. Analog oriented optocouplers, 5. Solid state relays, transistor output, 6. Solid state relays, triac slash SCR output. Seven, AC input optocouplers. Interrupters, optoelectronics, fiber optic digital links. TOSLink, versatile link, ST slash SC glass fiber modules. Fully integrated high speed fiber transceiver modules. Digital signals and long wires. Onboard interconnections. Intercard connections. Driving cables, coaxial cable. The right way, one far end termination. Differential pair cable, RS232, wrap up, review of chapter 12. 13, digital meets analog, some preliminaries, the basic performance parameters, codes, converter errors, standalone versus integrated, digital to analog converters, resistor string DAX, R-2R ladder DAX, current steering DAX, multiplying DAX, generating a voltage output, six DAX, delta sigma DAX, Pulse width modulation as digital to analog converter. Con frequency to voltage converters. Rate multiplier. Choosing a DAC. Some DAC application examples. Ge general purpose laboratory source. Eight channel source. Nano amp wide compliance bipolarity current source. Precision coil driver. Converter linearity, a closer look. Analog to digital converters. Digitizing, aliasing, sampling rate and sampling depth. ADC technologies, ADCs 1, parallel flash encoder, modified flash encoders, driving flash, folding, and RF ADCs, undersampling flash converter example, 
ADCs 2, successive approximation. A simple SAR example. Variations on successive approximation. An AD conversion example. ADCs 3, integrating. Voltage to frequency conversion. Single slope integration. Integrating converters. Dual slope integration. Analog switches in conversion applications, a detour. Designs by the masters. Agilent's world-class multi-slope converters. ADCs 4, delta sigma. A uh, simple delta sigma for our suntan monitor. Demystifying the delta sigma converter. So that's uh, delta sigma ADC and DAC. DAC. The delta sigma process. And aside, noise shaping. The bottom line. A simulation. What about DACs? Pros and cons of delta sigma oversampling converters. Idle tones. Some delta sigma application examples. ADCs, choices and trade-offs. Delta Sigma and the competition. Sampling versus averaging ADCs, noise. Micropower AD converters. Some AD and DA converters. ADE7753 multifunction AC power metering IC. The AD7873 touchscreen digitizer. The AD7927 ADC with sequencer. The AD7730 precision bridge measure measurement subsystem. Some AD conversion system examples. Multiplex 16 channel data acquisition system. Parallel multi channel successive approximation data acquisition system. Parallel multi channel delta sigma data acquisition system. Phase locks loops. Introduction to phase lock loops, PLL components, PLL design, design example, frequency multiplier, PLL capture and lock, some PLL applications, write up, noise and jitter rejection in PLLs, pseudo random bit sequences and noise generation, digital noise generation, feedback shift register sequences, analog noise generation from maximal length sequences, power spectrum of shift register sequences, low pass filtering, wrap up, true random noise generators, a hybrid digital filter. Additional exercises for chapter 13, review of chapter 13. Chapter 14, computers, controllers, and data links. Computer architecture, CPU and data bus. CPU, memory, mass memory, graphics, network, parallel, and serial ports. Real-time I.O., data bus. A computer instruction set. Assembly language and machine language. Simplified x86 instruction set. A programming example. Bus signals and interfacing. Fundamental bus signals, data, address, strobe. Programmed I.O. Data out. Programming the X.Y. vector display. Programmed I.O. Data in. Programmed I.O. Status registers. Programmed I.O. Command registers. Interrupts. Interrupt handling. Interrupts in general. Direct memory access. Summary of the PC-104 ISA 8-bit bus signals. The PC-104 is an embedded single board computer. Fascinating. I think we should make a note about that one because I think we'll have a look at that too, huh? What's that on... Uh uh, page 1012. No, no, no. No, 1013. We'll have a look at that at the end. That's the uh, PC-104 is an embedded single board computer. I think the PC-104 is the uh, ISA 8-bit bus. Um, what driver or I don't know what you call it. Bus master, I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> we'll find out. So uh, memory types. Volatile and non-volatile memory. Static versus dynamic RAM. Static RAM. Dynamic RAM. Non-volatile memory. Memory wrap-up. Other buses and data links. Overview. Parallel buses and data links. Parallel chip bus interface. An example. Parallel chip data links. Two high-speed examples. Other parallel computer buses. Parallel peripheral buses and data links. Serial buses and data links. SPI. I2C two-wire interface. TWI. Dallas Maxim one-wire serial interface. JTAG. Clock be gone, clock recovery. SATA, eSATA, and SAS. PCI Express, asynchronous serial, RS-232, RS-485. Manchester coding, biphase coding, RLL binary, bit stuffing, RLL coding, 8-bit <coughs> slash 10-bit and others. Uh, USB, Firewire, control area network, CAN, Ethernet, number formats, integers, floating point numbers, review of chapter 14. 15, microcontrollers. Introduction. Design example one. Suntan monitor V. Implementation with a microcontroller. Microcontroller code, the firmware. Overview of popular microcontroller families. On-chip peripherals. Design example two. AC power control. Microcontroller implementation. Microcontroller code. Design example three. Frequency synthesizer. Microcontroller code. Digital example four. Thermal controller. The hardware. The control loop. Microcontroller code. Design example five. 
Stabilized mechanical platform. Peripheral ICs for microcontrollers. Peripherals with direct connection. Peripherals with SBI connection. Peripherals with I2C connection. Some important hardware constraints. Development environment. Software, real-time programming constraints, hardware, and the Arduino project. Wrap up. How expensive are the tools? When do you use microcontrollers? How to select a microcontroller? A parting shot. Review of chapter 15. Appendix A, math review. Trigonometry, exponentials, and logarithms. Complex numbers, differentiation, calculus, derivatives of some common functions, some rules for combining derivatives, some examples of differentiation. Appendix B, how to draw schematic diagrams. General principles, rules, hence, a humble example. Appendix C, resistor types. Some history, available resistance values, resistance marking, resistor types, confusion derby. Appendix D, Thevenin's theorem. I don't really know how to pronounce that. The proof, two examples, voltage dividers. Norton's theorem, another example, Milman's theorem. Appendix E, LC Butterworth filters. Low pass filter, high pass filter, filter examples. Appendix F, load lines. An example, three terminal devices, nonlinear devices. Appendix G, the curve tracer. Appendix H, transmission lines and impedance matching. Some properties of transmission lines. Characteristic impedance, termination, pulses, termination, sinusoidal signals, loss in transmission lines, impedance matching. Resistive lossive broadband matching network. Resistive attenuator. Transformer lossless broadband matching network. Reactive lossless narrowband matching networks. Lumped element delay lines and pulse forming networks. Epilogue. Ladder derivation of characteristic impedance. First method. Terminated line. Second method. Semi-infinite line. Postscript. Lumped element delay lines. Appendix I. Television. A compact tutorial. Television. Video plus audio. The audio. The video. Combining and sending the audio and video. Modulation. Recording analog format broadcast or cable television. Digital television. What is it? D digital television. Broadcast and cable delivery. Direct satellite television. Digital video streaming over the internet. Digital cable. Premium services and conditional access. Digital cable. Video on demand. Digital cable. Switch broadcast. Recording digital television. Display technology. Video connections. Analog and digital. Appendix J. Spice primer. Setting up ICAP Spice. Entering a diagram, running a simulation, schematic entry, simulation frequency suite, simulation input and output waveforms, some final points, a detailed example, exploring amplifier distortion, expanding the parts database. Appendix K, where do I go to buy electronic goodies? Appendix L, workbench instruments and tools. Appendix M, catalogs, magazines, data books. Appendix N, further reading and references. Appendix O, the oscilloscope, the analog oscilloscope. Vertical, horizontal, triggering, hints for beginners, probes, grounds, other analog scope features. I think we want to have a look at hints for beginners on page 1160. 1160. So that's three things that we've got to check out. This book's going to take us forever to get through. Uh, other analog scope features. The digital oscilloscope. What's different? Some cautions. Appendix P, acronyms and abbreviations. Parts index and then the subject index on page 1194 of this beast. I guess we have to read out the list of tables, don't we? At least there's only about a page of them. So, the tables in the book include representative diodes, representative bipolar transistors, bipolar power transistors, JFET mini table, selected fast JFET input op amps, analog switches, MOSFETs, small N channel to 250 volt and P channel to 1000 volt. Sorry, that's 100 volt. N channel power MOSFETs, 55 volts to 4500 volts. MOSFET switch candidates. Depletion mode N-channel MOSFETs. Junction field effect transistors JFETs. Low side MOSFET gate drivers. Op amp parameters. Representative operational amplifiers. Monolithic power and high voltage op amps. multi meter candidate op amps. Representative precision op amps. Nine low input current op amps. Representative high speed op amps. Seven precision op amps, high voltage. Chopper and auto zero op amps. Selected difference amplifiers. Selected instrumentation amplifiers. Selected programmable gain instrumentation amplifiers. Selected differential amplifiers. Time domain performance comparison for low pass filters. VCVS low pass filters. 555 type oscillators. Oscillator types. Monostable multi vibrators. Type 123 monostable timing. Low noise bipolar transistors, BJTs. Dual low noise BJTs. Low noise junction FET, JFETs. Low noise BJT input op amps. Low noise FET input op amps. High speed low noise op amps. Noise integrals. Auto zero noise measurements. 7800 style fixed regulators. Three terminal adjustable voltage regulators. LM317 style. Low dropout linear voltage regulators. Selected charge pump converters. Voltage mode integrated switching regulators. 
Selected current mode integrated switching regulators. External switch controllers. Shunt two terminal voltage references. Series three terminal voltage references. Battery choices. Energy storage, capacitor versus battery. Selected logic families. Four bit sign integers in three systems of representation. Standard logic gates. Logic identities. Selected counter ICs. Selected reset slash supervisors. Representative comparators. Comparators. Power logic resistors. A few protected MOSFETs. Selected high side switches. Selected panel mount LEDs. Six digital to analog converters. Selected digital to analog converters. Multiplying DACs. Selected fast ADCs. Successive approximation ADCs. Selected micro power ADCs. 4053 style SPDT switches. Agilence multipurpose 3 ADCs. Selected Delta Sigma ADCs. Audio Delta Sigma ADCs. Audio ADCs. Speciality ADCs. Phase lock <coughs> loop ICs. Single tap LFSRs. LFSRs with length, a multiple of 8. Simplified x86 instruction set. PC104 ISA bus signals. Common buses and data links. RS232 signals. ASCII codes. Selected resistor types. Butterworth low pass filters. Pi and T attenuators. Wow, this book is epic. Shall we read the, the preface, preface to the third edition? I probably won't read all of the prefaces. There is three of them that have been uh, written. The first one was in April 1980. That's, uh, that's a few months before I was born. Wow. I feel like I'm in the, in the presence of greatness. Isn't this excellent? Wow. Anyway, let's read the, uh, the preface to the third edition. We won't read the other two prefaces, but let's see what they have to say for themselves. I assume it's both of the authors have written the... Uh, yeah, yeah, they've got both of their names uh, on, the, on the bottom of it. So, Moore's Law continues to assert itself unabated since the publication of the second edition a quarter of a century ago. In this new third and final edition, we have responded to this upheaval with major enhancements. An emphasis on devices and circuits for AD and DA conversion, chapter 13, because embedded microcontrollers are everywhere. Introduction of specialized peripheral ICs for use with microcontrollers in chapter 15. Detailed discussions of logic family choices and of interfacing logic signals to the real world in chapters 10 and 12. Greatly expanded treatment of important topics in the uh, essential analog portion of instrument design, uh, precision circuit design, chapter 5, low noise design, chapter 8, power switching, chapters 3, 9, and 12, power conversion, chapter 9. And we have added many entirely new topics, including digital audio and video, including cable and satellite TV, transmission lines, circuit simulators with SPICE, transimpedance amplifiers, depletion mode MOSFETs, <coughs> protected MOSFETs, high side drivers, quartz crystal properties and oscillators, a full exploration of JFETs, high voltage regulators, optoelectronics, power logic registers, delta sigma converters, precision multiscope conversion, memory technology, serial buses, illustrative designs by the masters. That was a, uh, Agilent. They, they seemed to like Agilent, didn't they? In this new edition, we have responded also to the reality that previous editions have been enthusiastically embraced by the community of practicing circuit designers, even though the art of electronics, now 35 years in print, originated as a course textbook. So we've continued the how we do it approach to circuit design, and we've expanded the depth of treatment while we hope retaining the easy access Access and explanation of basics. At the same time, we have split off some of the specifically course-related teaching and lab material into separate learning the art of electronics volume, a substantial expansion of the previous edition's companion student manual for the art of electronics. Now, just while he mentions that, well, they mention that. <sighs> I'll just uh, flip you over to the other view. We will finish this, we'll keep going, uh, but I'll, I'll just show you um, what they're referring to. So um, <laughs> this monster is supplemented by this monster, which is called Learning the Art of Electronics, a hands-on lab course. Um, Thomas C. Hayes, with the assistance of Paul Horowitz. So um, when they refer to uh, Learning the Art of Electronics, that's this, which is a whole other thing, which is, I guess, what they use for their university course. So uh, it's a whole other monster. Um, that's what they're talking about. And there's also this one called um, The Art of Electronics, The X Chapters with Paul Horowitz and Whitfield Hill. So these two guys have also written this other thing, which is a supplement, and it's got a bunch of stuff that they didn't cover in here, which is hard to believe there's stuff they didn't cover in here, but here it is. Now, these two other books, they're whole books, so one day uh, we'll do them for the new book review. So that'll be coming up in the future. Who knows when we'll get around to it. Um, but for now, we'll just keep continuing this one. So I'll throw you back over to the bench, and we'll keep getting through this preface. 
So for the 14th printing, in addition to numerous corrections and improvements, a whole new index of parts has been added for the benefit of readers, and the subject index has been greatly expanded. Digital oscilloscopes have made it easy to capture, annotate, and combine measured waveforms, a capability we have exploited by including some 90 scope screenshots illustrating the behavior of working circuits. Along with those <coughs> doses of reality, we have included in tables and graphs substantial quantities of highly useful measured <coughs> data, such as transistor noise and gain characteristics, E, N, I, N, R, B, B, H, F, E, G, M, G, O, S, S. Analog switch characteristics are on Q, in uh, capacitance, op amp input and output characteristics, E, N, and I, N over frequency, output common mode range, output swing, auto zero recovery, distortion, available packages, and approximate prices. The sort of data often buried or emitted in data sheets, but which you need and don't have the time to measure when designing circuits. We've worked diligently over the 20 years it has taken to prepare this edition to include important circuit design information in the form of some 350 graphs, 50 photographs, and 87 tables listing more than 1,900 active components. The last enabling intelligent choice of circuit components <coughs> by listing essential characteristics, both specified and measured, of available parts. Because of the significant expansions of topics and depth of detail, we've had to leave behind some topics that were treated in the second edition, which, however, will continue to be available as an ebook. Oh, there you go. Notwithstanding the use of later, larger pages, more compact fonts, and most figure size to fit in a single column. <coughs> uh, some additional related material that we had hoped to include in this volume are uh, on real-world properties of components in advanced topics in BJTs, FETs, op amps, and power control will instead be published in a forthcoming companion volume, The Art of Electronics, the X Chapters. References in this volume to those X Chapter sections and figures are set in italics. A newly updated artofelectronics.com website will provide a home for a continu continuation of the previous edition's collections of circuit ideas and bad circuits. It is our hope that it will become a community also for a lively electronic circuit forum. As always, we welcome corrections and suggestions and, of course, fan mail, which can be sent to horowitz at physics.harvard.edu or to hill at roland.harvard.edu. With gratitude, where to start in thanking our invaluable colleagues? <clears throat> Surely topping the list is David Trana, our indefatigable editor at the Cambridge University Press, Mothership, our linchpin, helpful latex expert, wise advisor of all things bookish, and would you believe, compositor. <laughs> this guy slogged through 1,905 pages of marked up text, retrofitting the latex source file with corrections from multiple personalities, then entering a few thousand index entries and making it all work with its 1,000 500 linked figures and tables and then putting up with a couple of fussy authors. <laughs> we are totally indebted to David. We owe him a pint of ale. We are grateful to Jim MacArthur, circuit designer extraordinaire, for his careful reading of chapter drafts and invariably helpful suggestions for improvement. We adopted every one. Our colleague Peter Liu taught us the delights of Adobe Illustrator and appeared at a moment's notice when we went off the rails. The book's figures are testament to the quality of his tutoring. And our always entertaining colleague Jason Galicchio generously contributed his master Mathematica talents to retrieval <coughs> to reveal graf graphically the properties of delta sigma conversion, nonlinear control, filter functions. He left his mark also in the microcontroller chapter, contributing both wisdom and code. For their many helpful contributions, we thank Bob Adams, Mike Burns, Steve Serwin, Jesse Coleman, Michael Covington, Doug Doxkill, John Hagen, Tom Hayes, Phil Hobbs, Peter Horowitz. George Kontopidis, Maggie McPhee, Curtis Mead, Ali Mehmet, uh, Angel uh, Petershev, Jim Phillips, Marco Sator, uh, and so on 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 and so on. So on. Uh, we thank also others whom we're sure we've overlooked with apologies for the omission. Additional contributors to this book contents, circuits inspired web based tools, unusual measurements, etc., from the likes of uh, Way Beast and blah blah blah, uh, and reference throughout the book in the uh, relevant text. Simon uh, Capellan has kept us out of the doldrums with his unflagging encouragement and his apparent inability to scold us for missed deadlines or contract <laughs> our contract called for delivery of the finished manuscript in December of 1994. We're only 20 years late. In the production chain, we are indebted to our project manager, Peggy Rote, our copy editor, Vicky Danahay, and a cast of unnamed graphic artists who converted our pencil circuit sketches into beautiful vector graphics. Remember fondly, our late colleague and friend Jim Williams for wonderful insider stories of circuit failures and circuit conquests and for his take no prisoners approach to precision circuit design. His no bullshit attitude is a model for us all. And finally, we're forever indebted to our loving, supportive and ever tolerant spouses, Vita and Ava, who suffered through decades of abandonment as we obsessed over every detail of our second encore. 
a note on the tools. Tables were assembled in Microsoft Excel and graphical data was plotted with Igor Pro. Both were then be beautified with Adobe Illustrator with text and annotations in the sans serif Helvetica new LT typeface. Oscilloscope screen screenshots are from our trusty Technonics TDS 3044 and 3054 lunchboxes taken to finishing school in Illustrator by way of Photoshop. The photographs in the book were taken primarily with two cameras, a uh, Calumet Horseman 6x9cm view camera with a 105mm Schneider Simar f 5.6 lens and Kodak Plus X 120 roll film developed in Microdoll X13 at 75 Fahrenheit and digitized with a Mamiya multi-format scanner and a Canon 5D with a Shyam plug. What is that? Google it. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, enabling 90mm tilt shift lens. The authors composed the manuscript in latex using the PC text software from Personal Text Incorporated. The text is set, set in the Times New Roman and Helvetica typefaces. The former dating from 1931, the latter designed in 1957 by Max Meidinger. Paul Horowitz, Winfield Hill, January 2015, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Wow. There's a, a legal notice addendum. Do you want to hear that? In addition to the legal notice appended to the preface to the second edition, we also make no representation regarding whether use of examples, data, or other information in this volume might infringe others' intellectual property rights, including U.S. and foreign patents. It is the reader's role, so it is the reader's sole responsibility to ensure that he or she is not infringing any intellectual property rights, even for use which is considered to be experimental in nature. By using any of the examples, data, or other information in this volume, the reader has agreed to assume all liability for any damages arising from or relating to such use, regardless of whether such liability is based on intellectual property or any other cause of action, and regardless of whether the damages are direct, indirect, incidental, consequential, or any other type of damage. The authors and publisher disclaim any such liability. Then we've got the preface to the second edition, also with the legal notice, and preface to the first edition. So the second edition came out in 1989, which is nine years after the first edition. And there we go, page one, foundations. Let's read the first paragraph. I always like reading the first paragraph, don't you? Let's do that. Introduction. The field of electronics is one of the great success stories of the 20th century. From the crude spark gap transmitters and cat's whisker detectors at its beginning, the first half century brought an era of vacuum tube electronics that developed considerable sophistication and found ready application in areas such as communications, navigation, instrumentation, control, and computation. The latter half century brought solid state electronics, first as discrete transistors, then as magnificent arrays of them within integrated circuits. In a flood of stunning advances that showed no sign of abating, compact and inexpensive consumer products now routinely, routinely contain many millions of transistors in VLSI, very large scale integration chips, combined with elegant optoelectronics, displays, lasers, and so on. They can process sounds, images, and data, and, for example, permit wireless networking and shirt pocket access to the pooled capabilities of the internet. Perhaps as noteworthy is the pleasant trend toward increased performance per dollar. There's a note here, note number one. A mid-century computer, the IBM 650, cost $300,000, weighed 2.7 tons, and contained 126 lamps on its control panel. In... <coughs> An amusing uh, reversal, a contemporary energy efficient lamp contains a computer of great, greater capability within its base and costs about $10. That's pretty funny. Uh, the cost of an electronic microcircuit routinely decreases to a fraction of its initial cost as the manufacturing process is perfected. See figure 10.87 for an example. In fact, it is often the case that the panel controls and cabinet hardware of an instrument cost more than the electronics inside. Wow, huh? So I wanted to see what was on page 30, I wanted to see what was on page 1013, and I wanted to see what was on page 1160. So let's jump ahead and do that. Jump up to page 30. There we go, first go, I got it. Transformers. Okay, we'll just read, uh, we'll read the, 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 this bit here. So... A transformer is a device consisting of two closely coupled coils called the primary and secondary. An AC voltage applied to the primary appears across the secondary with a voltage multiplication proportional to the turns ratio of the transformer and with a current multiplication inversely proportional to the turns ratio. Power is conserved. Figure 1.53 shows the circuit symbol for a... Have we got 1.53? Uh, where is 1.53? Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, figure 1.53 shows the circuit symbol for a laminated core transformer, the kind used for a 60 hertz AC power conversion. Okay. Transformers are quite efficient. 
output power is very nearly equal to input power. Thus, a step-up transformer gives higher voltage at lower current. Jumping ahead for a moment, a transformer of uh, turns ratio n increases the impedance by n squared. There's a... <coughs> there is very little primary current if the secondary is unloaded. Power transformers, meant for use from the 115 volt power line, serve two important functions in electronic instruments. They change the AC line voltage to a useful, usually lower, value that can be used by the circuit, and they isolate the electronic device from actual connection to the power line because the windings of a, tr a transformer are electrically insulated from each other. They come in an enormous variety of secondary voltages and currents. Outputs as low as one volt or so, up to several thousand volts. Current ratings from a few milliamps to hundreds of amps. Typical transformers for use in electronic instruments might have secondary voltages from, five to fi from 10 to 50 volts with current ratings of 0.1 to 5 amps or so. A related class of transformers is used in electronic power conversion in which plenty of power is flowing but typically is pulse or square wave forms and at much higher frequencies. 50 kHz to 1 MHz is typical. Transformers for signals at audio frequencies and radio frequencies are also available. At radio frequencies you sometimes use tuned transformers if only a narrow range of frequencies is present. There is also an interesting class of transmission line transformers. In general, transformers for use at high frequency must use special core materials or construction to minimize core losses, whereas low frequency transformers, such as AC power line transformers, are burdened instead by large and heavy cores. The two kinds of transformers are in general not interchangeable. A. Problems, problems. This simple first look description ignores interesting and important issues. For example, there are inductances associated with the transformer, as suggested by its circuit symbol, an effective parallel inductance, called the magnetizing inductance, and an effective series inductance, called the leakage inductance. Magnetizing inductance causes a primary current even when no secondary load, <coughs> even with no secondary load. More significantly, it means that you cannot make a DC transformer. And leakage inductance causes a voltage drop that depends on load current as well as bedeviling circuits that have fast pulses or edges. Other departures from ideal performance include winding resistance, core losses, capacitance and magnetic coupling to the outside world. Unlike capacitors, which behave nearly ideally in most circuit applications, the deficiencies of inductors have significant effects in real world, real world circuit applications. We'll deal with these in chapter 1x and chapter 9. Oh, chapter 1x must be in, uh, in, the, in the x. Yes, right, I see. Yeah, 1x is chapter 1 in the x chapters. Great. Okay, so that was a little bit about transformers. Now let's jump up to page 1013. I was looking at this. I wonder what I was doing here. Must have been looking at something. Anyway, uh, 1013. What have we found here? Selected delta sigma A to D converters. Wow, look at that. It's amazing. They've really done some homework, haven't they? Uh, uh, 1013. Ah. Okay. Now, there's a, um, there's a table here. Oh, there we go. Let's read that as well. Let's read the summary of the PC-104 ISA bus signals, and then we'll read the uh, PC-104 as an embedded signal board computer. So that's going to take us a little while to get through, but let's do that. But before we do, just please let me have some more water, because... I am parched. <sighs> I might move that book up a little bit too so you can see it better. Is that better? How about like that? That's pretty good, isn't it? Oh, wow. All right. So this is summary of a PC-104 ISA 8-bit bus signals. Through our examples, programmed I.O., interrupts, and DMA, we've seen most of the PC-104 bus signals, which make a multi-drop tour through the stacked peripherals in figure 14.18. Table 14.2 lists the full bus with pin connections. For, com for completeness, we summarize them all here, beginning with the ones we've already met. A19 to A0, the address lines. Three state out from bus master active high. All 20 lines are used to address memory with MR and MW as strobes, analogous to IOR and IOW. <coughs> That's read and write, obviously. But only the 16 least significant lines are used during IO access. 64K port addresses. IO devices should qualify address with AEN low. 
And then we've got uh, data lines, D0 to D7. Three state, bidirectional, active high. Asserted by CPU during memory or I.O. write. Asserted by memory during memory read or DMA from memory. Asserted by I.O. during port, uh, during I.O. read or DMA to memory. I didn't know they had DMA for the ISA bus, but they, they obviously do. Uh, I.O. R, I.O.W. Mem R, Memw. Data strobes. Uh, three state, output only, active low. Asserted by bus master during read or write. On writes, data should be latched on trailing rising edge, uh, qualified by address. On reads, data should be asserted during the strobe and ready before the trailing edge, qualified by address. AEN, address enable. Two state, output only, active high. Asserted by CPU during DMA cycles. IO ports must not respond with normal address decoding to IOR and IOW. Instead, IO port that received DAC uh, looks at IOR or IOW to put or take DMA data bytes to or from data lines. IRQ2 to IRQ7, interrupt request. Two state input only rising edge triggered, asserted by interrupting device. Prioritized with IRQ2 highest, IRQ7 lowest. Maskable in the interrupt controller via CPU write to port 12H, oh, 21H. Each IRQ level can be used by only one device at a time. Reset. Reset driver. Two state output only active high. Asserted by CPU during power on. Used to initialize IO devices to known startup state. DRQ1 to DRQ3. DMA request. Two state input only active high. Asserted by IO device requesting DMA channel. Prioritized with DRQ1 highest, DRQ3 lowest. Acknowledged by DAC1 and DAC3. Uh, through DAC3. Uh, DAC0 to DAC3. DMA acknowledged, two state output only active low, asserted by D CPU, DMA controller, to indicate grant of corresponding DMA request. ALE, address latch enable, two state output only active high. The 8088 used in used a multiplex data address bus, and this uh, signal corresponds to the 8088 strobing signal used by latches on the motherboard to latch the address. Can be used to signal beginning of a CPU cycle, usually ignored in IO design. Uh, clock. Two state output only. This is the CPU's clocking signal. It's asymmetrical, one third high, two third low. The original PC used a 4.77 megahertz clock, but higher speeds are common. Clock is used to synchronize wait state requests via IOCHRDY. That sounds like IO channel ready. In order to stretch an IO cycle for slower devices. Uh, OSC oscillator, two state output only. This is a 14.31818 megahertz square wave, which can be used when divided by four as a color burst oscillator for color display. TC, terminal count, two state output only, active high, tells IO port that a DMA block transfer is complete. A DMA device must qualify it with a DAC for the channel in use, since TC is asserted when any of the DMA channels finishes a block transfer transfer. IO check, the IO channel check. Open collector, input only, active low. Generates highest priority interrupt, NMI, non-maskable interrupt. Used to signal error condition from some peripheral. CPU figures out who is in trouble by device polling. See section 1439A. Each peripheral <coughs> uh, that can be a that, uh, each peripheral that can assert IO check must therefore have a status bit that can be read by the CPU. Uh, IO channel ready. Uh, open collector, input only, active high. The processor generates wait states if requested by a slow peripheral uh, that pulls it low before the second clock rising edge of a processor cycle, normally four clocks, used to extend bus cycle for slow I.O. or memory. Ground, plus five volts VDC, minus five volts VDC, plus 12 volts VDC, minus 12 volts VDC, ground and DC supplies. Regulated DC voltages that are bussed for use by peripheral interface cards. Check the specifications of the host processor for power limitations, which are machine dependent. Generally speaking, there should be enough power to run anything you can stack onto the PC-104 bus. The PC-104 as an embedded single board computer. The PC-104 standardized bus has been implemented in numerous single board computers with an impressive variety of compatible peripheral cards. These are created by more than 100 manufacturers. These little boards often wind up as embedded systems, that is, dropped into instruments as part of their intelligent design. Figure 14.19 shows a view looking down into the access hatch of a complex optical detector system on an astronomical telescope. There's a PC-104 SBC running embedded limit Linux from its piggyback flash memory disk. This particular SBC from Diamond Systems includes Ethernet and serial ports and other stuff not used here. The box on the left is an Ethernet media converter that let us use optical fiber back to the control room. That's a good idea when your observatory is on a mountaintop. 
that's where people build them because those thrilling lightning displays you get in the summertime can zap everything that is connected by wire cabling. Wow. So that's the, uh, the PC-104 parallel multi-drop bus making its grand tour. Wow. And here's the photo they were talking about. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And they've got it. Where's the Ethernet? Oh, there it is. They said that that was fiber. Fascinating. And then last but not least, page 1160. 1160. I forget what that was. 1163. Oh, this is about the oscilloscopes. I wanted to know the hints for beginners. Oh, there we go. It's not a very long section. That's probably good because this has been pretty long so far, hasn't it? Oh, wow. Well, since it's not very long, let's just do uh, this, uh, this whole... Well, not the whole thing, but from the beginning, huh? <clears throat> so... Uh, the oscilloscope, scope for short, is by far the most useful and versatile electronic circuit test instrument. There's a note here, note number one. It is sometimes said that practitioners of other engineering disciplines are especially envious of electronic, electro electronics engineers because we are blessed with such a splendid instrument with which to visualize the happenings in our circuits. I've heard that before. I wonder if it was in here. But I've certainly heard that remark. I uh, don't yet really know how to, um, to, to use my scope to full effect, but I do have a scope. It's a pretty good one. Um, and I should say, uh, I did actually find recently that um, if really all you want is a voltage reading, um, and you're not like you don't care about like the dynamics, like you don't care about how voltage tracks over time, then really uh, a multimeter is a better way to get a voltage reading than plugging it into your scope. Because yes, technically your scope is a voltmeter, and you can get a voltage reading. Um, it's just that like it's way more practical to use a, 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 a multimeter if you just want the voltage of something. Um, Okay, so let's start again. The oscilloscope, Appendix O. The oscilloscope, scope for short, is by far the most useful and versatile electronic circuit test instrument. As usually used, it lets you see voltages in a circuit as a function of time, triggering on a particular point of the waveform so that a stationary display results. Contemporary scopes are almost invariably digital. Input signals are digitized, processed, and displayed, and they do, and you, and they do, and you, and usually better what their analog ancestors did. To understand how to use an oscilloscope, we think it best to start with the traditional and nearly extinct two-channel analog scope, for which we've drawn a block diagram in figure 0.1 uh, and typical front panel 0.2. Digital scopes can carry forward nearly all of its features, so, uh, to which they add an impressive array of capabilities and a few hazards. The analog oscilloscope. Vertical. Beginning with the signal inputs, the most analog scopes have two channels. That's very useful because you often need to see the relationship between signals. Uh, each channel has a calibration gain switch which sets the scale of volts per division on the screen. There's a note here, note two. Note that the two channels can be set for different scale factors, offsets, and coupling. This goes also for digital scopes which commonly have four channels. There's also a variable gain knob concentric with the gain switch in case you want to set a given signal to a certain number of divisions. Warning, be sure the variable gain knob is in the calibrated position when making voltage measurements. It's easy to forget. The, the better scopes have indicator lights to warn you if the variable gain knob is out of the calibrated position. The scope is DC coupled, an essential feature. What you see on the screen is the signal voltage, DC value and all. Sometimes you may want to see a small signal riding on a large DC voltage. Though, in that case, you can switch the input to AC coupling, which capa capacitively couples the input with a time constant of about 0.01 second. Most scopes also have a grounded input position, which lets you see where zero volt is on the screen. In ground position, the signal isn't shorted to ground, just disconnected from the scope, whose input is grounded. Scope inputs are usually high impedance, one mega ohm in parallel with about 20 picofarads as any good voltage measuring instrument should be. There's a note here, note three. Scopes intended for high frequency measurements going beyond 100 megahertz, say, offer also a 50 ohm input impedance option. Uh, the input resistance of one mega ohm is an accurate and universal value so that high impedance attenuating probes can be used, as will be discussed later. Unfortunately, the parallel capacitance is not standardized, which is a bit of a nuisance when changing probes. The vertical amplifiers include a vertical position control, an invert control on at least one of the channels, and an input mode switch. The latter, <coughs> the latter lets you look at either channel, their sum, the difference when one channel is inverted, or both. 
There are two ways to see both. Alternate, which uh, in which al alternate uh, inputs are displayed on successive sweeps of the trace and chopped in which the trace jumps back and forth rapidly 0 0.1 to 1 megahertz between the two signals. Alternate mode is generally better except for slow signals. It is often useful to view signals both ways to make sure you're not being deceived. Horizontal. The vertical signal is applied to the vertical deflection electronics moving the dot up and down on the screen. The horizontal sweep signal is generated by an internal ramp generator, giving deflection proportional to time. As with the vertical amplifiers, there's a calibrated time per division switch and a variable concentric knob. <clears throat> the same warning stated earlier applies here. Most scopes have a 10 times magnifier and also allow you to use one of the input channels for horizontal deflection. This lets you generate those beloved but generally useless uh, Lissajos figures, don't know what that means, in elementary school and science fiction movies. I don't know what they're talking about there. So they've got uh, a block diagram of uh, a two-channel analog oscilloscope up the top here. Doesn't mean much to me, frankly. Uh, and then in the bottom, they've got a portrait of a two-channel analog scope. Okay. So, uh, okay, fair enough. I really love to get my hands on one of these old um, uh, analog scopes just for, for playing with. Uh, they're totally obsolete now, of course, and uh, take up a lot of space, so maybe not a good idea. Um, triggering. Now comes the trickiest part, triggering. We've got vertical signals and horizontal sweep. That's what's needed for a graph of voltage versus time. But if the horizontal sweep doesn't catch the input signal at the same point in its waveform each time, assuming the signal is repetitive, the display will be a mess, a picture of the input waveform superimposed over itself at different times. The trigger circuitry lets you select a level and a slope, plus or minus, on the waveform at which to begin the sweep. You can see from the uh, front panel that you have a number of choices <coughs> about trigger sources and mode. Normal mode produces a sweep only when the source selected crosses through the trigger point you have set, moving in the direction, slope, you have selected. In practice, you adjust the level control for a stable display. In auto, the sweep will free run if no signal is present. This is good if the signal sometimes drops to small values since the display won't disappear and make you think the signal has gone away. It's the best mode to use if you are looking at a bunch of different signals and don't want to bother setting the trigger each time. Single sweep is used for non-repetitive signals. Line signals, uh, ca uh, line causes the sweep to trigger on the AC power line. Handy if you're looking at hum or ripple in a circuit. The external trigger inputs are used if you have a clean signal available at the same time, at the same rate as some dirty signal you're trying to see. It's often used in situations where you are driving some circuit with a test signal or in digital circuits where some clock signal synchronizes circuit operations. The various coupling modes are useful when viewing composite signals. For instance, you may want to look at an audio signal of a few kilohertz that has some spikes in it. If HF reg position, high frequency reject, okay, uh, puts a low pass filter in front of the trigger circuitry preventing false triggering on the spikes. If the spikes happen to be of interest, you can trigger on them instead in uh, low frequency reject position. Many scopes now have beam finder and trigger view controls. The beam finder is handy if you're lost and can't find the trace. It's a favorite of beginners. Trigger view displays the trigger signal. It's especially handy when triggering from external sources. And here we are, hints for beginners. We'll finish with this. Sometimes it's hard to get anything to show on the scope. Begin by turning the scope on, setting triggering for auto, DC coupling, channel one. Set sweep speed at one millisecond per division, calibrate, and the magnifier off, times one position. Ground the vertical inputs, turn up the intensity, and wiggle the vertical position control until a horizontal line appears. If you have trouble at this point, try the beam finder. There's a note here, number four. Curiously, some scopes, for example, the once popular Tektronix 400 series, don't sweep on auto unless the trigger level is adjusted correctly. Now you can apply a signal unground the input and fiddle with the trigger. Become familiar with the way things look when the vertical gain is far too high, when the sweep speed is too fast or slow, and when the trigger is adjusted incorrectly. Wow. All right, well, that was a bit of a monster, wasn't it? Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll just flip it back over here and wrap up. Wow, I got through almost a whole bottle of water while we were uh, going through that book. So that was it, the inaugural uh, new book review. I'm pretty pleased with the, the one that we picked. This is an excellent book. I look forward to uh, uh, having a closer look at, uh, at it myself in more detail at some point in my life. 
um, but it's good to have. And uh, at some point, we'll do the uh, the other two books that uh, that were mentioned by the same author. Um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have a look at those as well. So um, I think I think that might do. This was a pretty long video, so I'll uh, I'll go and put this up, and uh, I'll catch you again soon.